It may have been too early to panic last week. I mean, the season just started. What about now? Sure, there are some players off to bad starts that maybe you shouldn't hold on to, but not these guys. Here are some players you may be worried about, maybe downright panicking about, but I'm going to tell you, you need to hold on for now. When you're getting ready to set those fantasy lineups, don't forget to make your picks on Underdog for MLB. They're going to have pick all season long, every single day, for all the matchups. Take the higher or lower on your favorite players and win money while you follow along with the games. If you haven't tried Underdog yet, you can sign up right now. Just make sure to use promo code ENDGAME for your deposit match. Just click the link in the description below or download the Underdog app to get in the action now. It's still very early, and as we've seen just this past weekend, a couple of games can make a huge difference. Look, some people are asking me about Giancarlo Stanton. Is it just time to ditch him? And look what happened. Home run in each of the past two games, including a grand slam. Same goes for Zach Geloff for Oakland. Terrible first week, and now all of a sudden, you're glad if you kept him. So who else should you be holding on to for now? Let's go back to the Yankees and talk about Nestor Cortez. Now, I haven't been all over Nestor Cortez really having a big bounce back season. What we saw is last year compared to his breakout season the year before, 2022, his ERA more than doubled. His whip jumped up to 1.25. He just really wasn't that valuable in fantasy compared to the year before. But there was hope because if you look, his expected ERA was much lower and his expected batting average was actually really low at 216 and there was some underachievement here. His numbers should have been better. But to start this year, first two games didn't look any better. In fact, looks like he just might be on the decline. If you look at his ratio after first two starts, you're going to see a 6.30 ERA and a 1.70 whip. That led him to be one of the most dropped players last week. So why am I holding out some hope? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, what we saw is that he had two really tough matchups, some offenses that are pretty good. Arizona, of course, one of the hottest offenses the first week of the season. And I know the Houston Astros haven't been good, especially in the win column so far, but they do have some pretty good hitters. And in both cases, he really just got off to a bad start in the first inning, gave up some runs, but then settled down. Now, you can't keep doing that. Obviously, it doesn't really matter which inning you get hit hard and if you're getting hit hard. But like I said, under the hood, Cortez really didn't take a big step back last year. Had a couple of injury issues. I think that may be partly to blame. Right now, I think he will get better. I'm going to hold tight. Now, I get it if you want to bench him in your next start, but I don't think it's time to give up completely here. And that's especially because his next start is scheduled to be against the Marlins, who now just finally are not winless anymore, but is still far from a scary offense. Now with hitters, we tend to be a little bit more patient, but look, for a guy like Spencer Torkelson, you're expecting some bombs and you've gotten none so far. In fact, what you got is the slugger is hitting 184 on the season. It's just coming off another 0 for 4 day. I have not seen him dropped just yet, but I have a feeling another couple down games, maybe another few days without a home run, and you're going to see him start to get dropped here and there in shallow leagues, maybe sold low. People are going to start to forget what he did in the second half last year. And I think that's a big part of it. Remember last year, he had a terrible first half. I mean, really didn't do much for you. It was after the All-Star break that that power really surged. Now, I don't want to wait another couple of months for him to get going, but I don't think we will. Remember, this is a player who's still young, and this whole Tigers lineup so far has been disappointing. Look, Parker Meadows, I can't say don't drop him because he's barely even gotten a hit so far, despite being a leadoff hitter, despite being talented. It may happen, but you don't have to hold him. But you do need to hold Torkelson because the power will get there. And look, despite not going deep yet, so far in the early going, got some promising numbers. His barrel rate in the 89th percentile and his hard hit rate in the 94th percentile. Just needs to make a little bit better quality contact, get that launch angle up a little bit. It's going to happen for him. And this Tigers offense will be better. Riley Green is starting to heat up. It's just going to take a little more time. I know some people are just itching to drop Jordan Walker because you're thinking, here we go again. What happened last year? You know, nice first week and then struggled and then got sent down. Is it going to be history repeating itself? Look, you know, Walker is one of the guys I've been in on this preseason. Say he could lead you to a championship team. And some people think that's funny because it doesn't look like it after one and a half weeks. 
Look, Walker's not winning you anything right now, but it's not like he's been horrible. Like he's hitting right around 200 in a small sample. He gets you three, four hits in one game. All of a sudden, his average is way above league average. The power's not there yet for him either, but he does have three doubles. And yeah, they say he's got some strikeout issues. His strikeout rate right now is 26%. That's barely above league average. The problem with a guy like Walker is that expectations were set so high last year before the major league season even started because of his hype as a prospect, and he hasn't met it yet. Now, there is no guarantee that he does it this year. Maybe he doesn't break out. Maybe he doesn't help you in fantasy, but I'm going to hold on and find out. And the same goes for another of my favorite preseason breakout prospects, and that's Henry Davis in Pittsburgh. I think what's most disappointing here is that Pittsburgh, as a team, is, I guess, way overachieving. I mean, their first place, yeah, I don't think anybody saw that coming, and their offense has shown a lot of life. But sadly, Davis has not been part of the party, only hitting 133, and despite being number six batter most days, just on Sunday was dropped to the ninth spot in the order. Is that something we're going to see going forward, or are we just going to see him on the bench? Another reason for concern, although he just got catcher eligibility, finally, that's a huge boost, but then they went out and got a catcher in Joey Bart. Remember Joey Bart for the Giants was one of their top prospects. Didn't quite pan out there. And now all of a sudden the Pirates plugged him in. He started. He hit a home run. Are we going to now panic about Henry Davis losing his job? Obviously, I'm going to say that would be a gross overreaction. What we're looking at with Davis is just a bad three, four game stretch. Because to start out the first week, he was actually doing fine. And a couple of bad games can sink your average this quickly. The bat will come around. You can slot him in a catcher now. You want to bench him? Okay, fine. Do that for now. But don't just cut bait here on a talented player because of a bad stretch early. Same goes for Edouard Julien for the Twins. You know, it didn't take long for people to panic because on opening day, he wasn't in the lineup. This is really simple to figure out. He's a left-handed batter, doesn't hit particularly well against lefties, at least not yet, and there was a lefty on the mound, and he is going to sit against lefties. It's just a fact, and there are a lot of players in that same situation. That doesn't mean he doesn't have value, because he's still on the strong side of a platoon, and the best thing is, when he is in the lineup, he's hitting the leadoff. So Julian isn't playing as much as you'd like for a player that you'd like to play in fantasy, ideally every day. There's just not a lot of players who aren't in some sort of a platoon once you get past those first few obvious studs. But what's encouraging is that even though he hasn't really popped off in terms of power, he has stolen a base or two, but the plate discipline is pretty good. Look, we know he has power, but the thing is you worried about, well, is he going to strike out at a high rate? Is his average going to hurt you? So far, he's got a walk rate in the 98th percentile. So I guess the problem is right now he's maybe being a little too patient. But hitting at the top of the order, his job is to get on base. He's doing it. I still think there's 20 home run potential here. This guy who, at the top of that order, is going to score a fair amount of runs. So don't give up on Julian just because he hasn't shown out just yet. Now, it might be a little easier to give up on a guy who's a little older, not as exciting. Maybe you think you've seen the best you can see in Jorge Polanco. He's had his best season. His prime is over. He's in a new city, a new team. It's just not clicking. Do we just dump Polanco and move on? Well, Polanco's an interesting case because he's a guy who's got talent, he's got some good power, and he can hit for average too, but he's had a lot of injuries lately. And by lately, I mean the last couple of years. Only played in 80 games last season, 104 the season before with Minnesota. But the last time he did play close to a full season in 2021, hit 33 home runs, drove in 98 RBIs. So now he's oft injured, age of 30, maybe his prime, the best seasons of his life are behind him. Yeah, I think that's very possible. It doesn't mean he cannot be a contributor for the Seattle offense. This is another team that's just been very slow out of the gate, mainly on offense. It's going to click at some point. I think they got too much talent there. And Polanco, whether you realize it or not, is starting to pick things up, has a little modest six-game hit streak going, and finally got his first home run of the season. Look, whether you're slotting in at second base or third base, middle infield, corner infield, you look out there in the waiver wire these days, I just don't see too many options out there that are more exciting or better. Again, all I'm waiting for is to see that he is healthy, and I think he will produce in the long run. I'm going to have to be patient here. 
And then when it comes to catcher, looks like there are several options that could be on the waiver wire depending on your league. I've talked about over and over again, both preseason and waiver wire. Luis Camposano off to a hot start, definitely help you. Logan Ohapi, he's got a ton of power. He hasn't even tapped into yet. He's doing pretty well. I get it. Your catcher's off to a slow start and you want to pivot. It's very tempting and it's hard for me to say no, but I think I'm going to wait at least one more week on Gabriel Moreno of the Diamondbacks. As I said, that D-backs offense has been hot out of the gate and Moreno has just not been one of those guys who's helping. A guy you expected to hit for average, he's not doing it. Heading into week two of the fantasy season, he's got a 179 batting average, but StatCast says it should be much better. His XBA is 266. Okay, so if the batting average does come around, that's still not great, right? The 260s, is going to give me power or speed or what? Last year, only seven home runs, six stolen bases, but that was pretty much half a season's worth of at-bats, right? 341 at-bats, so he could get you in the teens. But now you got to wonder, maybe this is a guy who's getting a little overhyped because of his postseason numbers. In fact, last year in Arizona's postseason run, he was a big key, had some key hits, and four home runs, 12 RBIs in those postseason games. But his batting average was only 238. It's fair to question whether he's somebody who was a little overvalued on draft day. So with that said, if you can grab Camposano or Ohapi to replace Moreno, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. But if you're going to just go searching for any guy that's on the waiver wire, somebody like a Patrick Bailey or like an Ivan Herrera, I don't know that's going to help you long run. I'm going to stay a little bit patient with Moreno, but he's going to have the shortest leash out of all the guys I've talked about so far. You got to remember in baseball, and especially in fantasy, it's a marathon. You always have to look long term. Hold on to these guys for now, but always be ready to pounce when it's time to pick up a hotter player. If you didn't catch the waiver wire video, some of the top ads to make right now, if they're available in your league, you can check that out right here.